Hi, it's Badder with Badder's Better Diorama Hacks. I'm going to say something very controversial now. Mini art buildings. Who of you thinks they're rubbish and will never buy one again? Well, I'm afraid it's you that's rubbish because you're not building them properly. <laughs> Let me explain. The reason why I'm even mentioning mini art buildings is because this is what this building started out from. Uh, originally I had mini arts ruin the village house because I wanted to scratch build a building from it. Um, a ruined building which which I've done but it's three times bigger than what it was originally intended to be. Um, but yes so there is actually one part of a mini art kit in there and I'll just show it to you now don't worry there's no earthquake going on this is this is all um, this is all removable detachable it's a multi pose so it's actually designed to do this <laughs> so this here that gable end wall was originally mini arts ruined village house I've converted it into a two pitched roof I've lowered the upper floor window down the wall because it was a bit too high. I've also shortened the height of that window and shortened the height of the door, doorway on the ground floor. And I've added bits to it like the portico, the gable woodwork and a few other bits and pieces. But it's basically mini arts ruined village house. The inside part of that, which also came with the kit, plastic obviously, rather than use the plastic kit itself, I took a mould, latex mould, and cast the inner wall section in plaster. I then did the same with the outer wall, uh, and then using the plaster cast from those, constructed the supporting walls uh, in the rest of the building, and also to cast walls for the for the actual side walls of the building but that's neither here nor there the point is mini art buildings at ace i love them and if it wasn't for them most of my buildings would never get built in the first place i'm just going to push that out of the way no breaking anything yeah, top tip, don't build your buildings on the diorama base, construct them off the base, then you can do all sorts to them. If you have any ideas later on like I did, as in, oh, I want to make it multi-pose. And you end up having to take, take most of the walls down and rebuild them. <laughs> you know, afterthoughts, oh, I'm going to stick a bloke in that corner over there, or a hang a lamp from over there, and you can't do it. Or it's a thousand times more difficult because you're now having to get into it while it's stuck on a great big board. So yeah, construct them off the base, diorama base, before beforehand, before sticking them on the diorama itself. Right, so what are you doing wrong then, you people that don't like mini art buildings? <clears throat> uh, this is one I've got in my stash. Uh, I, ne I never intend to build this. As with all my mini art buildings nowadays, I buy them purely as patterns for future buildings. So I buy the kit if I like the look of the architectural details, the brickwork, stonework, whether it's a city building, factory building, a rural building take latex moulds off of them and then I've got a library of moulds from which I can make other buildings, my own buildings. But like this one, sometimes I, I may use the kit parts themselves. Who knows? I'm, I probably won't live that long to find out. But here's the thing, I can bet most of you are not making them correctly, using the correct construction methods. Because at the end of the day, buildings mini art make are not injection molded plastic kits they are vacuform kits that means a sheet of plastic 
hot plastic is placed over a form and then the air is sucked out and that sucks the plastic down onto the form and then the plastic cools and sets to the shape of that form. These parts here are the bed or the, the, the backing if you like to the parts that are on there. It's all single piece of plastic obviously. The most common complaint is all oh, the, the walls are rubbish they don't fit together the the joins between inner and outer are rubbish and the building goes wonky and this doesn't fit that and they'll, they'll moan about them and I can bet you my bottom dollar what they're doing is cutting the part out like this. holding the blade vertically and going all around the edges of the detail. Uh, doorways, windows, what have you. That's what they're doing. What they're not doing is removing that backing sheet from the edge of the detail that they're cutting out, the part they're cutting out. They're cutting vertically down and leaving that one millimetre on the edge. That puts everything out of skew. So the next part, when you attach the, the rear of that wall onto this one, you've actually got two millimetres of plastic between the two parts. Shouldn't be there. If you're adding that to a side wall and it fits on in a particular way, you push that side wall back from the front of the building by one millimeter. In some cases it'll be pushing it back by two millimeters depending on the joint and then they wonder why their building has gone all skew with and parts that are supposed to match up and join together don't match up and join together. That people is why you think mini art buildings are rubbish. It's you that's rubbish okay. So now you know that Get yourself a mini art kit, and I honestly, I'm not plugging this, I'm not, not an employee of mini art or anything, but I, I hate to see people ripping into their kits and accusing them of being rubbish and all sorts, when it's the person doing the accusing that is rubbish. First one then, how do you remove that from the backing sheet? Quickly, efficiently, uh, accurately, more importantly, removing that one millimetre backing at the same time. And it's dead simple. Flip the sheet over. All you have to do is remove all these one millimetre backings. You, if you imagine that was on a huge sheet of sandpaper and you just kept rubbing that piece, you could remove all that one millimetre of backing and all end sides. Remove all that, but it's, it's too much effort, too much hassle, too much energy. So you use a scalpel and all you do is you go around the edge of the forms whether that's a doorway or a window aperture or whether it's an actual part itself. So you get a sharp, sharp knife scalpel so you scrape all the way along that edge back and forth, back and forth until you cut straight through the join. That join is the point of contact between the par and the backing plastic in a similar way to this window then. So I'm just going to cut this window out now. It's very soft plastic so it's, it's surprisingly quick. If you hold the blade at a 45 degree angle and then just scrape You can see I'm putting a chamfer on the side. But any moment now that's going to cut through the contact area of, of the part, which in this case is the back of the window, which you don't want. But obviously this part coming out now is a piece you just throw away. But if this was a, an actual part of the wall, you'd do exactly the same thing. This is slightly complicated by this little bit breaking the wall, but you get the idea. I'm probably going to damage that bit because I'm rushing, but 
doesn't matter. I can say I'm not going to build this building anyway. <laughs> I can repair that if I ever use uh, make a plaster cast of it. So yeah, uh, just keep doing that. People watching this go, why, why is he doing it like that? Why is he doing it like that? It's because I'm taking the backing off that one millimeter, as well as cutting the part out, or should I say, scraping it out. I'm also taking that one millimeter backing off. Now, once it goes, it goes. You know, just give it a couple of bends, batters, and forwards. There you go. So that part's now removed. It's quick and it's easy, and it's quicker than cutting it out vertically like that which would be quite hard to get into all that fine detail by scraping it you don't have to worry it does it all for you and you remove that one one millimeter of backing sheet at the same time so it stands to reason then you also remove one millimeter from the door uh, window and door apertures doing the same thing the only thing that's left now are the edges so one millimeter needs to come off of this edge and the plastic is so soft it comes off very very easily I should have shown you first that you can actually see a lip there that is where the uh, backing sheet was cut off with a guillotine or something and that's the remnants of the backing sheet so if I file sand or scrape down to that level there that should be that one millimetre of backing sheet gone. I'm only going to do it roughly. But it's, it's probably no more than that. Uh, give it a tidy up with the sandpaper block if you want. Uh, same at this end. Again, there's a, you can see a lip on the edge, a little uh, blemish. It's not showing up there. But yeah just just along there you can see a mark that's the remains of the backing sheet that was sliced off there so again take that off so yeah there's little clues as to where the backing sheet was uh, and obviously you can use that for your as your guide but honestly that the, the scraping thing if you've got a, a long straight edge with no kinks or details in it um, it's really really quick you can do it in a matter of 10 20 seconds or something I've done small wall sections with crinkled crumbly edges uh, in 20 seconds uh, so yeah you've now got your part which should be exactly as it should be with no backing on it uh, and then obviously that then fits correctly to its partner part uh, I'll just get that now right obviously the partner part needs to be treated the same uh, th this one hasn't been it's been taken down to the edges on the brickwork but it hasn't in the in the window area so there's still one millimeter of sheet that shouldn't be on this part that top window it's got one millimeter of backing sheet on it so that now it protrudes on the edge is now protruding to the left and when I put this sheet on it'll interfere with it and hold it further away you can see now down the bottom where I've removed the backing sheet from both parts you've got a good join uh, I, I haven't done any sanding or going along there with a um, fine tooth comb to tidy that up that's just how it's come out after scraping backing off a couple of places I went a bit mad with the scalpel got a bit overzealous so there's a gap there but otherwise that's, that's a perfectly reasonable join obviously you can fill that but the point is the two parts that wall is the correct thickness that wall is the thickness it's supposed to be it was designed to be 
If you hadn't shaved the backing off, it would be two millimeters further apart, which as I said, would push all the walls two millimeters further away than they should be. So that's problem one dealt with. Get rid of that backing plastic. Second one is all the windows and doors and they have horrible gaps around them and the joints are rubbish and you have to fill a lot of joints and blah blah blah. So again they're not thinking they're trying to glue a thin edge to a thin they're trying to glue those edges to matching edges very tiny contact areas using super glue I would assume I would hope but there's there's just so little room there to glue stuff and you're fiddling around with it you can't locate anything on anything and it just gets into a complete mess uh, things are also a bit flimsy and weak uh, and I don't like that either but this solves all those problems glue I'm using um, coffee wooden coffee stirrers but they could be strips of plastic uh, strips of cardboard you glue those around the inside of oh, sorry the outside of the window and door apertures CA them on if that edge there is meeting the same edge on the opposite part glue a strip of coffee stirrers down there same with the bottom, same with the top. Wherever you've got a joint, glue something to bridge the gap. So you can see that those coffee stirrers stick out further than the wall or the window aperture to. And then when you put the other part on top, those slide around the window aperture. There you go. So now in there, Get it. You've got a nice, nice joint. It's, don't forget it's not glued or anything at the moment. So you've got a nice tidy joint. And if it is a bit messy, you can fill it. But that, that now is a strong, strong bot, a strong joint. Uh, like I say, if you do along, same along the bottom edge there inside. Same at the top inside. And then you've also got a big wide area that you're applying CA to, your cyanoacrylate glue. So you'll get a good bond between the, t the two pieces. This part is one of the more awkward mini art parts with a corner that meets with angular parts in the corner. I think this side wall actually gets cut away when you make the model, pretty sure. So you end up with nothing to glue anything onto. So I roll up a piece of paper, CA it to the, the slopey side of this part. And then when you put that on there, you can use that as your bridge to fix to the other part. And when you put CA on that, that will set like plastic so that that will cope with that particular style of joint the other thing i don't like is on a big expanse of wall everything gets very floppy and bendy which is okay around the windows if you use the um if you use the coffee stirrer technique but i will also reinforce i'll, I'll stuff this with rolled up newspaper or folded up cardboard, scrum, scrumped up newspaper, tissue, anything, and then give it a, a, a dose with PVA if necessary. Uh, and then that'll set, well then when you put this part on top, obviously you, you make sure you've got enough stuff in both parts, uh, and then bring them together, CA them in the normal fashion around the side using the coffee stirrers as bridges and then that will set solid like a rock and then later on if you're having to drill parts in the wall like you want to add a floor and put some beams and rafters in or what have you this then becomes rigid you know it's it's all strengthened and fortified just 
you don't want to start pressing on here and have something pop off up here or split up there because you're doing this on it so again that, that's what I do Rein, reinforce stuff walls um, and because all the pieces are constructed properly they will all fit properly <laughs> together you won't get all the complaints that you get or hear of so I hope that's given you some helpful hints and some of you people that hate mini art buildings might now decide to give them another go okay <laughs> could end up with a scratch built building like this you know <laughs> all right then take care everybody